is there a remedy if, I, if I'm a physician or a nurse and I, I, I believe what you're telling me, which is I don't believe I'm racist or acting in such a way, but there are unconscious um, biases at work, can I unlearn them? Can I, can I work my way out of it? And if so, how? There are a number of strategies that have been shown um, to be effective. One of the, the, the basic override, well, I would say two things. The, the first thing is to realize that that could be me. The, the typical healthcare provider, I, I had many um, talks to, to medical, nursing, and other health professional groups after the Institute of Medicine report came out. And the typical healthcare provider in the United States would say, That's, I would never do that. I would never provide less pain medication to a, a black patient than a white patient. Um, whereas the evidence is clear that black patients get less pain medication um, with, with, with similar um, levels of, of conditions. So the first thing is to realize that could be me. That, uh, and that people who have implicit biases are not bad people. They are just reflecting the culture and the beliefs that they were, that they were raised with. So that's, that's the first point. The second big principle is the challenge of focusing on what we call individuation versus categorization. What is normal for human beings as we process information is to put things into categories. Um, so I see you and I don't see you as a unique individual Don Berwick, but I see you as a middle-aged white male. I've, I've put you in a category, and in my mind, there are lots of associations that comes with middle-aged white male. So it's how do you look at, an in, at a person, at your patient, at your client, and see that person as an individual and try to understand the individual context of that person as opposed to instantly seeing them, which is, which is natural because that's how we, we deal with the complex cognitive information we have to to manage every day, we put things into categories. It simplifies life. It helps us to navigate our, uh, our social world. So it's normal for us to do that. So that's, that's one general principle. There are a range of other, other strategies that have been, been shown to be effective. One is um, trying to put yourself in the shoes of the other. So you have a patient who is an elderly black male. And if you stop and wonder, I what, wonder what his life was like. And what was it like for him to grow up in this society? Um, and what are the things he encountered? So the extent to which you tried to walk a mile in someone else's shoes, that is a, another strategy that has been shown to be effective. There's also a, a strategy that's called counter stereotyping, which means you think that all women are weak. Well, could you sit back some days and, and just imagine what a strong woman would look like? Mm -hmm. And, and imagine that, that women could be strong. So those are a number, but they're, they're a broad range of um, psychological strategies that have been shown uh, in very careful laboratory e experiments to, to, to minimize the occurrence of it. I would say two things. Um, one is processes of implicit bias are more likely to occur when someone is working on the time pressure, so you don't have time to think, you, 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 you just default uh, to, to, to your, your social categorization processes. Um, you, it's also more likely to occur when you are dealing with complex cognitive information. In fact, uh, researchers point out that many of the, the features of a typical encounter between a patient and a healthcare provider the, the ingredients in, within that encounter are some of the very factors that social psychological studies show maximize the processes of implicit, implicit biases, biases operating. Uh, I'll guess that fear can play a role. In it. When yes, you're, when you're fear, afraid, anxiety yeah. um, also play a role, absolutely. Mm -hmm.